all summer the sweaty season sandals sunshine swimming so many s's i feel like a slithery wall snake swimsuits i asked a poop town of ladies what their main frustrations whoa stay away from the candle what their main frustrations were when picking out a swimsuit. And I don't think I've ever gotten so many replies so quickly. They came in like an avalanche, like a big hurtling, fluffy, like a, there were a lot of responses. And out of thousands of replies, I narrowed it down to three main grievances. Lack of coverage, lack of support, and lack of flatteringness. Flatter, flatulation. Oh, and price. Let's talk about modesty. I definitely understand the desire for modesty, but before you make your swimsuit, you have to ask yourself this question. Which of the following areas are you most okay with risking a little bit of showiness? Because when moving around a lot, which you should be doing while swimming, because if you ain't playing mermaids, why are you even swimming? The fabric will shift a bit. When wearing a one-piece, gravity dictates that you heighten the risk of the bottoms riding up or the top being tugged downward just a little bit. However, with a one-piece, there is no risk that your stomach will be seen. I've recently found that I'm a little bit more of a- OW! I've recently discovered that I'm more of a two-piece girl. I'd rather people see a little piece of my stomach than either of the two aforementioned areas, especially in terms of the bottoms, which is why I started making my own a couple years ago, when I realized there was a budding trend that I was not on board with. High cut leg holes. Speaking of which- Why has this trend survived multiple years? How has it survived 2020? Practically nothing else has. Can we make this the year that this heinous humiliation contraption of a garment dies? Who do I call to- Hi, cancel crew? Cancel crew? I have your next victim for you. Um, these bottoms. Yeah, uh, I've had it up to here with them. So, here's a quick rundown of how I've been making my bottoms. <laughs> Good boy! Let me tell you, if you genuinely want people to respect the six foot distance rule, get yourself one of these bad boys. No, you're not a bad, you're a good boy. It's, it's just a figure of speech. I don't know if everybody just sort of internalized Alfred Hitchcock's The Birds, or if it's really just a respect thing out of fear that he might fly away from me, but people really keep their distance, don't they? Okay, well, yeah, there was that one drunk guy that literally wandered into my yard just to touch him while he was on my shoulder. You, you were a good judge of character on that one. You actually did fly away. Okay, let's go. Be sure to get either a spandex or a lycra. A good trick to remembering the word lycra is it sounds like the beginning of like Christ, which you should be when at a store. Because, you know, he was friendly to everybody. A great way to lower the cost of your project is to line your swimsuit not in the same spandex that you have on top, but in this cheaper, flesh-colored material. Nextly, you're going to want some of these bra inserts, especially if you're planning on swimming in cold water, but don't buy them at the store. Get them on eBay. If you're making a two-piece, you'll want some wide elastic for the waistband. And regardless of what you're making, you will definitely need some thin elastic. If you have some strange phobia of not wearing metal, you can get one of these closures as well. I highly recommend you get creative with some of the decorative elasticized trims that they have at Joann's because I only got this one and it turned out fantastic, but I'd love to see what all of you could come up with with some of the other trims. When in line to check out, be sure to give your bird some affection to reward him for being such a good boy. Really? Another great trip to the store. He behaved really well. Uh, the only issue is this towel keeps falling off, so I need a better poop catching method. A uh, quick poll. Would it be weird if I put a maxi pad on my shoulder? Now return to your RV, reach into the hidden compartment under your table, retrieve any needed supplies, attach a prosthetic for length, and dial your machine to the setting of zigzag stitch. Now time to make some bottoms. Double up a piece of your fabric, then trace some underwear that you like the fit of, or in this case, some bottoms that I made a couple years ago that I traced off of some underwear. Then add a few inches to the top, depending on how high-waisted you want them to be. In this case, I made them extra, extra high-waisted so that I could bunch them up and make sort of a ruched effect. Real quick, sorry if there's some strange noises in the background of my voiceovers, it's because this is happening in the next room. Now you'll want to trim the front half of your leg holes inward a bit, because usually you're a little bit bigger in the back than you are in the front. To complete this action, lay the whole garment out and then fold it in half long ways. Then, mindful of your chicken's feet, cut away a toenail clipping shaped piece. Uh oh. I think it's that part of the day. Okay, so I'm gonna have to take a quick break so I can give her a peaceful egg laying environment. But alas, she was taking too long, probably because I was staring at her. I don't think I could lay an egg with someone staring at me either. So I set to work cutting out the lining. And then... She's leaving. You know what that means? I missed it! I'm sorry guys, if you want to actually watch her lay an egg... Watch my Kylie Jenner Christmas dress video. Feel how warm this is. Now attach the lining to the main fabric using a top stitch all along the perimeter. Then if you're me, get distracted by a foreign language argument. <laughs> 
Okay, but well, what does that mean? Not to sound privileged, but I only speak English. It's all I've ever had to know. Now here's the secret to bottoms that won't ride up. You want to cut a strip of elastic to be exactly the width of your upper thigh, and then line the leg holes with it. Although, I don't know you, maybe you want it to ride up. Then after sewing up the sides of your bottoms, cut a piece of elastic to the size of your waist. Sew it into one big loop, and then place it over the... Yeah, use your eyes for this because I don't have words. Now I'm going to show you how to make a simple bikini top. Begin with a rectangle of fabric that is about two and a half Hershey bars wide and about one and a half tall. Fold it into the width of one Hershey bar and then again into half a Hershey bar. Now you're going to cut out teardrop shapes. Make sure they are not triangles. The bottom really has to be rounded for this to work. Trace it onto your lining fabric, then pin and sew along the edges, leaving three openings, one at the top and one at each side. Now cut out a slithery little snake of fabric, twice the width of the elastic you wanna use for your straps. Fold it in half, sew it into a big long tube, and then turn it inside out. For this, you can use a safety pin, a loop turner, or an exceptionally trained colony of ants. Now make that snake eat the snake that is your elastic, feeding it through until it peeks out on each end, which given the metaphor sounds like a digestive issue. Then do the same for the piece that will go around your rib cage. Now you could make this twice as long as I made it if you want it to tie in the back, but I'm using one of those little clasps. So I made it just about a fingertip longer than the width of my rib cage. Then feed that through the bottom holes at the corners of your teardrops, and then sew right along the top of it, creating a channel. Now insert your pads through that tiny cave door at the top. Then insert the bottom edge of your strap into each of those same openings. Attaching the clasps is so easy I won't even explain it to you. You guys are smart and I don't want to seem like I'm talking down to you. That's why all my tutorials are so bad. I don't want to insult your intelligence. But I will say everything will be a lot more secure if you zigzag stitch some elastic onto the edge of it, including the inside of your bikini top. And as a little treat to you, I will give you the grand reveal of this one right now because I won't be modeling it at the end when I model all the other pieces. But here's one I do intend to wear, and often. I've made this style already, and it's probably my favorite. Trace one of your favorite sports bras. I preferred the width and length of one and the neckline of another, so I made my own little Frankenstein combination. I cut two layers of identical pieces for the front and back, but for the back, I decided to trim it into a deep V just for a fun little back tan line. Like with most garments, sew around the edges while it's inside out, but this time, you're going to sew elastic onto all of those edges too. Now, like with the bikini, we are going to sew a channel all along the bottom to encase our rib cage elastic. Now stitch up those sides as well as the top of the straps and then flip it inside out. Cut a hole in the side of just the inner layer of fabric to slide in your pads. I recommend saving a little piece of the salvage edge of your fabric so that you can use it as a tie in the front center of your top to either shake up the look or just get a better tan line. Another fun hack is this. If you're going to a friend's graduation party but lack a good gift idea, I highly recommend a plaster cast of their own head. Congratulations, Ruthie. I pray you really get ahead in life. And now for probably the simplest top that I made. This one only took me about an hour total. Cut out a headboard shape of fabric, two layers, then sew along the top edge. Measure a piece of elastic to slope over your chest and meet at the bottom under your armpits. Pin it in place at each outside edge as well as the center of the inside of your headboard and then sew it in place, pulling, tugging, and stretching as you go. Now this is where our decorative elastic comes into play. Cut it exactly to the width of your rib cage, then top stitch it to the bottom of your top. Make a couple long black worms and slap them onto the top of your top and you have straps. Then simply sew the elastic in place in the back. Because this stuff is so stretchy, no closure is needed. Then I set to work making another pair of bottoms with a specific request from my followers in mind. Many of my followers stated that they desired better tummy control. Now, this can be achieved by getting some shapewear from a thrift store and cutting it into the shape of your bottoms and using it as a lining. Now, this is a top pageant secret. Or was a top pageant secret. Yeah, pageant place. Someone leaked some info. For the front of my bottoms, I cut out the exact shape onto the lining, but for the back, I kind of left the bottom part open because I guess I just didn't really want that part of me to be smushed in. Then like usual, I pinned and sewed it along the edges inside out. Now we're gonna remove the pins and flip it right side out. By the way, if you're concerned about what Tonto is doing, that being an inordinate amount of nothing for an unwholesome amount of time, that's normal. Lastly, I sewed some of that same fancy trim onto the waistband. The next day, before I could get to work on the swimsuits, we had to release a raccoon that we caught in our yard. It was hard to say goodbye to those precious little hands, but I knew that he really wanted to go. So, um, he barked at my dad and then ran away. <laughs> oh, he's climbing up a flipping tree! Hey, friend! Then I decided to try something new, something a little bit like a tie front top that I made for my friend Courtney a little while back, but with slightly longer ties so that hopefully it could stretch and tie in the back, making sort of a wrap effect. Now, unfortunately, I don't have enough of this fabric to make bottoms, so I'm just going to have to wear this with either my pink swimsuit bottoms or as a shirt with maybe this skirt. 
And this is too, it's basically an undergarment swimsuit, which is kind of the same thing. Has anyone else just always thought it was odd that wearing undergarments in public was frowned upon, totally not okay, unless there was a body of water nearby? It's like these upper thighs completely unfit to be seen a few blocks away here by the water. It's great. Expect it. Maybe something is just broken inside of me. I noticed the thing you're not supposed to notice. Like Hannah Montana's best friend's brother, you know, he had the sixth sense. Well, I have the seventh. I recognize that we're all in our undies at the beach. That's the seventh sense, that. That's why as a teenager, I always wore shorts with my bathing suit because otherwise it was just like living that nightmare where you show up somewhere in public and you're in your underwear, except it was real life and everybody else was in them too. But apparently I grew out of that because I'm making a plethora of swimsuits and I do intend to wear them all. So hip hip, a crit, hypocrite. Speaking of underwear, I remember back when I was in musicals and I had a solo coming up and I was really nervous, someone would always come at me with that advice. Picture the audience in their underwear. And I'm sorry, but that is just the worst advice. Because now I can't stop picturing them in their underwear and it's making me more uncomfortable. Like who wouldn't get uncomfortable picturing all their friends' parents in their underwear? Who came up with that advice? Like you're telling me there's some weirdie out there that gets some sick sense of comfort in the presence of undie clad mobs? Like, phew. The panty parties here, the tidy whitey tribes accounted for. Now that my eyes have filled their quota of pasty white thighs, now, now I'm comfortable enough to hit all the high notes in my solo. <laughs> yeah, cancel crew, that advice. Now being that this fabric was a lighter color than most, I decided to double line it so that the pads wouldn't show through as soon as it got wet. So instead of placing the pads between the outer fabric and the lining fabric, I was just placing it between the two lining fabrics. Also as with everything else, I added elastic around the edges to make it a lot sturdier. I didn't get a very good shot of me working on the back of this top, but just know the back is the shape of the front of a sports bra. And now as sort of an afterthought, let me show you how to make a one piece because I didn't do that. Measure from your shoulder to your crotch and then draw just a general bodysuit pattern. The beauty of swimsuit making is you don't really have to pay attention to what size you're making because it's stretchy. After cutting out the neckline, save those two scrap pieces for if you have a daughter someday and you want to make her a matching swimsuit. And now to get the perfect fit before you sew the pieces together, you're just going to hold it up to yourself. So far this one looks like it makes my hair color look a little dingy. Like, like this wasn't the fabric for me. If you find that the fabric you chose is not flattering, adjust your hair color as needed. Much better. The front half of my one piece is composed of two identical layers, whereas I only used one on the back. So for the front side, I sewed the elastic on while it was inside out, then flipped it right side out. And for the back, I simply folded the fabric over the elastic. I don't know about you, but I find the accurate directions to be really boring. Are you guys feeling sleepy too? I'll try to be less descriptive next time. Oh, this. It's somewhat important. I recommend getting a little bit extra of whatever fabric you pick out and making a separate tie, just a long tube of fabric. Honestly, an underrated tool of flatteringness is just distraction. If for whatever reason, there's a part of your body you don't want people to look at, just draw the eye elsewhere, whether that be making a little bow for your hair or a belt. An eye patch. Maybe carry around some taxidermy. Maybe a snake coiled around each ankle. Th that might help. If you're confused about where I am, my sewing machine decided to start being a little turd, so I had to move out into the shed where my backup machine is. If you'd like to avoid prying stares of strangers, I recommend sewing up the sides of your garment. I hand sewed cups into this suit, but for those of you who want more support, I want you to know that you don't have to be afraid to wear an actual bra in the water. You know, there's actually no rule against it. And with this suit, the way it's cut, you can do that and the bra won't show at all. <laughs> model all the two pieces but it just feels so weird without a real body of water nearby most of the pools are closed i have a friend who has a pool several states away <laughs> 